Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Time to do an up and video, an up and update upon the release of this company's half year results that they'd released, I think it was like the 28th of August. Company share price dropped 34%, or was it 32%? Well, it doesn't matter, that's just semantics. The market didn't like what they read uh, in this company's uh, results, uh, this company's outlook, and the just hits keep on coming for this company. So in today's video, I'm going to go briefly through this company's financial report, uh, very briefly go upon the outlook for this company, because at this point in time, whatever the management says in regards to the outlook matters not because the market wants to see results right now. Then I'm going to go through and look at the historical uh, releases of this company, announcements from this company. And also talk about a few of the mistakes I made, a few of the successes as well, but few of the mistakes I made when it comes to Appen because I am a shareholder right now. And in fact, I have been a shareholder of this company through most of its life on the ASX. And that was good for a period of time because the share price increased from about 60 cents up to above $30. And I made a mozza on Appen, but I made mistakes uh, during the downward cycle or downward progression in this company's share price and valuation. So I have learned a few things when it comes to Appen, and I have will make sure that I won't repeat the mistakes I've made because it's very important to learn from your mistakes. And that's true for all things in life. But the other thing it's very important to do is look at your successes and take away some lessons to learn from those successes. So even though I've made mis some mistakes with Appen, over the past two years, I also want to reflect on my um, successes when it comes to this company. So let's have a look at Appen's half-year results. Why has the market punished this company? And it all comes back to, well, a few things. The first thing is the results. So revenue down 24%, underlying EBITDA, negative 18.1 million, underlying profit, negative 34.2 million, Statutory profit, negative 43.3 million. So those aren't looking good at all. Now, the most important thing here is how do these results compare to um, guidance? And that's one of the problems I do have. I didn't see any guidance from the company. So when the company doesn't release any guidance, maybe they did and I just missed it. Uh, but when the company doesn't really release any guidance and they release numbers like this, uh, the market is going to have a bit of a hissy fit. That's exactly what it did. The global services division was, uh, looks like EBITDA positive, uh, underlying EBITDA positive by 8.7 million. Their new markets division, uh, EBITDA negative 21.8, but revenue dropping both in those divisions, 27% in global services and 14% in new markets. Overall, revenue down 24%. Uh, underlying EBITDA, as I mentioned, negative for the half year. The then start talking about investment in product development. That won't matter much if they keep seeing business decline like it has over the past few years. Uh, also talking about uh, cost cutting, which is okay because, but there's only so much costs can be cut. Eventually, this company will have to increase their revenue and their margins. So this is very important. There's only so far costs can be cut. So even though they're on track to deliver $46 million in cost savings, uh, that can only go so far. So I don't really care, about, really care about costs and savings at this point. I want to see what they're putting in place to increase revenue in the future. Cash flow summary. summary. So they were operating cash flow positive by $9.7 million in this half year, down from $17.1 million last half year. But investing activities, uh, negative $12.4 million, which means more than likely some of that was capital expenditure, which means they were free cash flow negative. Uh, this half year, more than likely, they're very close to free cash flow negative one year ago. Uh, so, and the balance sheet, total equity are down a little bit to 146.7 million. So, uh, more than likely, you might see a few other write offs over the next few years because, um, more than likely, they have a little bit of goodwill left. Goodwill uh, is 50, $51.3.1 million and identifiable intangible assets, $53.3 million. So, wouldn't be surprised if they can't improve what they're doing to see a significant impairment 
in the next few years, which would decrease that total equity. So the thing I'd be looking for with Appen, if they can improve their business, uh, I would be looking for a total equity about 20%, which would mean a profit of approximately about $30 million for this company. That's based off the total equity and what I would expect from this company in the future. Whether they achieve that uh, remains to be seen. And I'd, I'd say on the probability probabilistic scale, it's a low probable probability. Now onto the turnaround progress and outlook. And to be fair with you, I don't care about this. So the first thing I point out is generative IA is ex going to explode over the next nine years. A KGA of 34% based off, uh, according to Acumen Research, from 8 billion in market size to 111 billion. And Bloomberg Intelligence says it's going to increase from 23 billion in 2021 to 897 billion in 2013, KGA of 50%. Now, it's okay to talk about addressable market, but how much can Appen get of that addressable market? Who knows? Maybe they can't get anything uh, because at this point in time, they're not doing very well. Uh, they also mentioned humans critical to generative AI. This is has been one of my problems with Appen. Uh, they're a fact that they, they not really a tech company, in my opinion, because uh, they do use humans to uh, give sort of a feedback to the AI or, you know, the what they do is, Appen does, is uh, they have uh, employ humans all around the world and they point out, say, that's a tree. So they get humans to point to, to note to the AI that that's a tree and this is a gum tree or this or eucalyptus tree or this is a cider tree, that sort of thing. So you do need humans for that. But my other concerns with Appen was originally they were very concentrated. The customers, I think I had three major customers and eventually those customers said, we don't really need you as much as we used to. And that has been the problem for Appen over the past few years. So let's just talk about the growth vision, um, which is fine. This is all fine to have goals and to have a vision. But the problem is uh, going forward for Appen is if you can, or if they can realize those goals, realize that vision. And this is the most important part and the most difficult part for Appen. And if they turn things around and when they turn things around, it's a big if, uh, but if and when they turn things around, that's the time to get excited about this company. Not yet because they're still in a downgrade cycle. Uh, so that's really all I want to talk about in regards to Appen's uh, results. Uh, there are reasons why the share price is down a fair bit and or 32.4% I've written down here. Now we're going to go back through history and talk about some of the successive I have made with Appen and also talk about some of the mistakes I made with this company. So initially I made a lot of um, good decisions when it came to Appen and then one bad decision or it all comes down sometimes to just one bad decision. Fortunately, I have things in place right now, which are where I won't make these bad decisions with companies like Appen. Now, if we go back, this is the chart. So this can be listed on the ASX, was it 2014 or 2015? I think it was 2014. Uh, so you can just see here, just this chart, as we go back through time, uh, the chart would look, it looks absolutely brilliant. So this company did list on the ASX. Here it is, uh, 7th of January, 2015. So just after a new year in 2015, share price at that point in time was around about 50 cents. Yes, you could have bought this company for 50 cents and ridden it all the way up to about 30, it was actually over $40 at one point in time. Now, what I tend to do is I don't care about IPOs. I don't look at IPOs. I don't invest in IPOs. I want to see at least six months of history, at least the first results, uh, unless the company releases a profit upgrade. And I have done this in the past when a company has not been a listed entity for at least six months, and then they release an upgrade, and I will take advantage of that. And the other important thing here is when you look at the first six months, you want to see at least the share price steady going sideways or at least going up. You don't want to see a significant decrease or decrease in the share price. And right now, the majority of IPOs decrease, you see a decrease in share price over the first six months. And only those companies where you see a share price increasing, those are the companies you want to think about taking a position. So with App and share price really was going slowly upwards, very slowly upwards for the first six months. And then the company on the 28th of May, 2015. So this was, you know, seven months after they listed. Uh, the share price at this point in time was heading towards $1. The company did release their results, their first results. This was half-year results. 
share price increased 10.2% on the day. This was the first uh, signal or buy signal. Uh, I wasn't following up at this point in time. So my rules in place back in 2015 were a little bit different than now. If Appen did list on the ASX right now, and we saw a very similar thing happening here, I could have taken a position in this company on the 28th of August. I'm pretty sure they had made an upgrade on that day as well. And then you see share price starting to increase. And not long after the release of their results, on the 26th of October, 2015, the company released a profit upgrade. This is the sort of thing I'm looking for. And you can see the share price had moved into an uptrend at that point in time. Share price actually had increased to about $1.30. So if I was following Appen at this point in time, I probably would have taken a position around this time, if not earlier, because these are the things I am looking for right now. Back in 2015, I wasn't really looking for these sort of things. Share price on this day increased 15.7%. Now you can see the share price took off and the share price pulled back a little bit. This was a nice little buy the dip opportunity. And then share price went back into an uptrend. And then on the 20, 30th of May, 27th of May, in fact, 2016, they had the general meeting. And there must have been some sort of upgrade during the general meeting because, because the share price rallied 14.5% on that day. So something positive happened on the day. And then the share price just kept on rising. At this point in time, share price is now above $2. And then on the 18th of May, actually 17th of May, 2017. So there's a fair bit of period here where um, share price started to go backwards at this point in time. But then on the 17th of May, look at that. You can see something really positive happened on this day. So in fact, they released a trading upgrade or trading update at 4.10 p.m. on the 17th of May, 2017. Share price increased 26% on this particular day. This was another buy signal. And look what happened to the share price after that buy signal. Share price on that day closed at $3.15. It took about six months for the share price to get to $6.20. So a doubling in share price in about six months. There was three real big negative days in October 2017. Share price actually went down 5.3, 112 and 6.1% in three consecutive days on pretty big volume. That could have been a little bit scary. The company also received a price query from the ASX because of that. And then that panic died away. And then on, not long after that, on, I've written down here, on the 30th of November, 2017, the company announced an acquisition. Share price rose 22.5%. I don't get excited about acquisitions because the majority of acquisitions are not successful and are not uh, good for investors, particularly for the bigger companies. For smaller companies, they can be, um, beneficial for shareholders, but typically acquisitions are not beneficial for shareholders. So I probably wouldn't have gone excited about that company. Now I should mention, I actually took a position in Appen in in um, May 2017 after that, what was it called? Uh, that upgrade on the 17th of May. That's when I took a position in this company just above $3. Uh, and then I just held firm for that. I didn't look at much at the chart for Appen. And whenever the company did release a profit upgrade or anything like that, uh, I just liked it, but didn't add to my position. Then on the 21st of February, 2018, the company released their full year results. So this company released their full year results in February, half year results in uh, August. Share price rose 28.8% on this day. Now, even though it rallied really hard on the day, you can see share price actually pulled back. So that's a sort of negative sign. But at this point in time, share price is still hovering between $9 and $10. So this was a three-bagger for me at this point in time. And I don't really care about the movements in the share price. I probably like the, the day it rose 28.8%. And then, really, the last positive day, positive announcement this company released was on the 26th of February, 2019. So this is the last positive announcement I have anyway. So that was on the 26th of February, 2019. Share price rose 21.7%. On this day, share price now above $20. In fact, this is a seven-bagger for me at this point in time. So this is based off their results. So that's the end of the positive news from this company. Share price kept on rallying. Uh, and then a little bit of a dip in the share price in 2019, but it's okay. And then we had the COVID-19 financial panic. Now, I sold my app and shares, took profits uh, in, was it early, late? No, early February 2020. So I'm not sure if I've told anyone this, but I went high, highly to cash in early February 
uh, there are people, experts said who, there are experts out there who said you could not see the COVID-19 thing happening. It uh, took them by surprise. That's an absolute lie. Uh, if you did your research, you would have seen the potential of what happened during COVID-19 or the lockdowns and stuff like that. In fact, I might do a video on this because I want to show you the podcast that I listened to that put in very you know, accurate detail what might happen in the world uh, because of what was happening in China. At that point in time, there was no cases of COVID-19 anywhere but China. But this one podcast made me realize that this was a problem. And that's one of the reasons why I went about 80% to cash. Uh, I also thought that at that point in time, that the market was overvalued and was better to pay off my mortgage. And that was a time in February 2020 where I became debt-free. I've remained debt-free since. And even though I went 80% to cash, I have built up my investment significantly since then. I think it's upwards of um, $500,000 right now from very small base. Uh, so I reacted also, this is very important. I probably expected that the downturn in the market was going to be way longer than it was. And it's very important to note when you have made a mistake, not a mistake, but when you realize things are changing or moving in a little bit different direction than what you thought. And I started buying in late March, early April. And Apple was actually one of the first companies I bought back in at around about $18. So it's near the bottom, not quite the bottom. It's very hard to pick the bottoms or time the bottoms. But I bought back in at $18. And the share price just zoomed higher. In fact, the share price went to $18 all the way to higher $42. But I sold out. So I had a, did have a look at when I sold out in Appen. And I sold out at $36. Uh, so it would have been in July 2020. And the main reason I sold at $36 was simply because the share price rallied a lot. So it doubled from when I bought uh, back in late March. And I just thought at that point in time, Appen was a little bit overvalued. Uh, it was ridiculously overvalued at that point in time. And I didn't have the highest confidence in what Apple was doing, that there was long-term or potential for long-term success. Uh, you can see the share price rallied really strong in August 2020. And then all of a sudden, the share price dropped 11.1% on the 27th of August. And then 28th of August, shopped, dropped another 10%. This was on the back of results. This was the first bad news from the company. And this is, or just after this, is when the share price of Apple moved into downtrend. And that's when we started to see the company release more and more negative news. The first really negative announcement from the company was the 10th of December, 2020, when the share price was around $26. So this was a downgrade. And the downgrade was in regards to EBITDA, and they expected EBITDA now to be between 106 and 109 million. So they keep that in the back of your mind. So they expected EBITDA to be between 106 and $109 million um, after this particular downgrade. And that's when the share price started to move down. Uh, we saw some, they released their four-year results in February 2021. Uh, share price decreased 12%. And there was another downgrade in their results. And then on the 6th of May, the share price actually decreased 21.1% in one day. There was no news flow from the company, but the company did release or receive a query from the ASX. And then on the 19th of May, the company actually did, uh, share price did respond or rise 17.4%. Now, at this point in time, it must have been a trending update because, or something, maybe it was a GM. Uh, and they actually gave some guidance in regards to EBITDA. And that EBITDA guidance was for it to be between 83 and 90 million, significantly lower from that downgrade of December. So we're talking about $20, $26 million a decrease in um, EBITDA guidance. And then in August, 26th of August, share price decreased 21.4%. At this point in time, share price was getting very close to $10. Now, during this period is when I made my mistake with Appen. So remember, I sold out at $36 um, and I thought it was overvalued. And then I saw the share price decrease from $36 down to $12. And this comes back to anchoring. And I think it's not wise to anchor. So I just thought there was a 67% decrease in share price. There's probably better value in Appen right now. So I actually took a position in Appen at about $12 uh, in sort of the middle of 2021. And if you look at the chart, there's no reason for me to take a position, even if I thought there was good value. Share price at this point in time was in a well-defined downtrend. There was a lot of negative sentiment around this company. So even though the share price rallied pretty nice uh, at times during that period, particularly after their 
um, GM or whatever is in May, uh, there was further bad news to come. And the first bad news was on the 26th of August, 2021, when the share price decreased 21.4%. So on the 26th of August, they released their half-year results, and this was another downgrade, a very slight downgrade. And now they decreased their expected EBITDA to be between 81 and 88 million. So keep that again, that EBITDA number in the back of your mind. And the share price kept on dropping. Look at that. Kept on dropping on the uh, 26th. I've got the 26th of November. Share price decreased 18.8% on no news flow, but the share price is, is in a well-defined downtrend. The next bit of bad news was in the 24th of February, 2022, when the company released their four-year results. EBITDA, 78.9 million before Forex costs, or not Forex costs, but uh, currency exchanges and that sort of thing. So remember... The half-year results, they expected EBITDA between, to be between 81 and 88 million. It came in at 78.9 million. So this was another really bad result from Appen. And that's why the share price dropped. Uh, it was a 28.7%. Share price dropped down to $6. There was a one-day takeover bid for the company. Share price rebounded $8. And then the next bad announcement from the company was the 2nd of August, 2022. This was a trading update. Now they expect... EBITDA to be 9.6 million. Again, 9.6 million. I think this might have been for the half year because that's really low. I've wrote all those numbers down and the share price kept on dropping. Share price kept on dropping. Share price kept on dropping. 10th of May, 2023. So we're not that long ago. Share price dropped 28.2%. This was another trading update. Uh, and now they expect EBITDA to be negative. So this is the first time uh, they expected negative EBITDA. I uh, can see this little rally in the share price just after that. This was that short-term AI hype in Appen. This is why uh, Appen share price rallied quite hard. Uh, that's the only sort of short-term good news this company has seen. Um, and one of the reasons I have a long-term uh, moving average sort of channel and a short-term moving average channel is because I want to see the long-term moving averages and the short-term moving averages move in the same direction. So what the short-term moving average is showing us is those short-term investors getting excited. So this was just the short-term investors getting excited. The long-term investors are not excited at all. That's why I have two moving average channels. I want to see excitement in both the long-term investors and the short-term investors. And then, of course, on the 28th of August, 2023, share price dropped 324 percent. So my main mistake with Appen is taking a position simply because I thought share price decreased from $36 to $12. There must be some value in this company right now, even though the share price is in a well-defined downtrend. And in fact, there has been no sign at this downtrend coming to an end. Even though we did see that rally in the share price back in May of this year, that was not a signal. That was not a breakout in the share price because that long-term moving average was still going down and the short-term moving average was still below that longer-term moving average. For a very short period of time, the share price got above both moving averages, but it was not long last. And we saw some profit, not profit taking, but we saw some uh, shareholders take uh, advantage of this rise of share price to get completely out of Appen. So at this point in time, I'm still share of this company, but my value of shares in this company is too low to care about this company anymore. So I'm just hoping and that is the appropriate word right now for me when it comes to Apple. I'm just hoping they can turn things around. If I see signs they're turning things around, and this is the most important thing, and the chart shows me that the market agrees with those signs of things turning around for this company. So I need to see the share price in an uptrend. I need to see some sign of financial news, uh, good financial news from the company. I am not to gonna, going to buy any more shares in Apple. Until then, and... Who knows? The value of the shares in Appen could go down from here. There is potential because the market cap of this company is still, was it 200, 238 million? There is potential the shares of this company could fall to 15 cents. Uh, the market cap of this company could fall to uh, $23 million. We just don't know at this point in time because this company is not profitable. EBITDA negative, cash flow negative, burning through cash. So even though they're doing cost savings, they're still going to be cash flow burning. So things have to turn around for this company or the future is bleak for a pen. So until I see some sort of light in Appen's future, I am not going to add to my position, no matter what management is saying about that turnaround story. I need to see proof 
with my own two eyes. And the most important thing, I need to see the market agrees with me, which means the share price needs to be moving into an uptrend or developing uptrend, just like email payments right now. So those who don't know what's happened to email payments, they released their results and it was better than expected and the share price has broken out. In fact, let's have a look at Emerald. This is what I want to see with Emerald, with um, Appen. This is what I'm looking for with Appen, just email payments. This is a beautiful looking chart. And the share price up today, again, another 10% after share price increasing 32% yesterday. This is exactly what you want to see with Appen. And we have no, we have seen no signs of this breakout just yet. Uh, so a beautiful looking chart for email payments. Hopefully you've taken advantage of that. Otherwise, that's it for this video. I am going to do some hurricane watching. Hurricane Adalia uh, is moving into the Appalach Appalachee Bay in Florida. They have never experienced, according to the uh, National Weather Service, um, a major hurricane, Category 3 Plus, has never entered Appalachie Bay in recorded history. This is the last day to get prepared. Now, fortunately, these days, you can follow any American channel online. And that's what I usually do in these sort of setups. I love, I go straight to the local TV stations, and the major city in that area is Tallahassee, which is the capital of Florida. I'm not sure many people would know that. And Florida is... I'm going to look at the Florida forecast right now. This is going to be excellent. I love doing this. Okay, therefore, forecast, tropical storm conditions. It's possible with hurricane conditions also possible. Um, of course, yeah. Anyway, and it is it's almost September, which is hurricane season there. I love living in America. The, the wide variety of weather over there is just amazing. Uh, it's one thing I wish we had here is more variety in weather. Uh, but, of course, the culture in Australia is much better than the United States. And for those who don't know, I'm harshly half American, half Australian. I have lived um, eight years in America, uh, the rest of my time, apart from one year in Japan, in Australia. So anyway, enough about me. Um, that's all I've got for you today. If And remember, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.